right, Professor Chino, we are live. What's going on here today? Hey, we're live. What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Professor Chino here. I'm here with my boy, Jay Fitzpatrick. And today, you know, first of all, let me thank uh, the Aperture community. You know, guys, thank you for giving me the opportunity to show you some cool stuff. I call this segment Armbars Galore. We're here at Pound for Pound in Markham, and I hope that you can get something out of uh, this video. What we wanted to talk to today was obviously about arm bars. And uh, the fact is, for this particular um, uh, segment, you're gonna need to have a little bit of knowledge about all the different positions. The basic four positions that you have in Jiu-Jitsu, back control, mount, side control, and guard. We're gonna be looking at arm bar setups from all of these different positions. But first, let's talk about something very important. The important thing about attacks of any kind, not just for arm bar, triangle, or omoplata, is the movement of your hips. You need to be able to move from that linear attack from your opponent to get your hips offside and to get your, ball, your legs involved into the movement of setting up your attack. For instance, one of the movements that I like to do is actually to free up my hips. I like to go here and here, here and here. If you notice my hips keep changing here. Here and here. I do this as a warm up. And then I work that into a transition with my partner. Please pay attention to my hips. Okay, all I'm doing is switching my hips. Switching my hips. Switching my hips. Side to side. 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 And then from there I go to a warm up. A warm up would be the six step arm bar. So I go here, I trap the wrist. I trap the tricep, I bring down all the way over and across. Now I don't need this hand. I'm gonna use this hand to break his posture here. And then I'm gonna put my foot on his hip. Now this is very important, you see this foot? I don't just wanna put it on top of his back. I wanna shoot it right into his armpit here. And here's a little detail that has helped me break the posture. I actually grab my shin. And from there I switch my leg to the other side and boom. I go there. Me having my foot so deep into his armpit allows me also to, if he be, will, were to begin to defend this armbar and heal like this, he could stab me or all kinds of stuff, right? The good thing about having this foot so tight into his armpit is I can actually throw him over to his head. And now I have my sweep and I can continue with my armbar, I can drop the leg, I can do all that type of stuff. Inevitably, what's gonna happen is that <clears throat> you're gonna do that a bunch of times. So you do it a bunch of times, your partner does it a bunch of times. Inevitably, you will start working on that defense, okay? And what you need is an arm to be able to arm bar it. So he says, I don't want you to break my arm. So he takes his arm out. Let's look at uh, one of my favorite arm bars from in there. So now I'm here, dropping the arm, breaking the posture, getting my angle, and when I go here, I went too wide. So he takes his arm out. Oh, I lost the arm. No more arm bar. Well, there's still something out there. This is the arm right here. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna raise my hips, bring his arm across, okay? And now watch. I'm gonna pivot at his hip, and I'm gonna hook the back of his neck with my other foot, here. You notice my hips came to this side already. And now, I'm gonna be looking to move my leg onto the other side, here. And now I can finish the arm bar from here, but the same scenario applies. I can also throw him towards his head. And now I have the arm bar in here. Let's take a look at that again. So I go a little slower so you can see all the different beads. So I'm gonna go here, trap the arm, break the posture, pivot, and I'm here, I trap. And then look, when I switch, boom, his arm comes out, no problem. Trap the tricep, bring the arm to the other side. Pivot, hook the back of his neck, switch to the other side, finish here one, or throw him towards his head. Here, and now you have this arm bar that you can finish in there. Super neat. And you know, I'm glad that we started from inside the guard. Because Jay does a really, really creative arm bar, and I actually really, really like it, and actually it's one of the ones that I teach to my more advanced kids class. I run a kids program as well, very successful. We've been racking up the points in the local competition circuit. I also show it to my adults. Adults is a different vibe, of course, but we do have a successful program with them as well. 
This armbar, legit. Let's see it. Check it out. <clears throat> so now this is sort of from an arm drag. Now an armbar can be done in many different ways. I can go here, boom, oh, that's why. Right. Look, there's an armbar right here with an overhook. So if you can try the arm here, here, see that, grab, and look, boom, pull your arm out. You can't, right? And now all you just gotta do is throw your leg over to the other side, same scenario applies. You can finish the armbar from here because you have an overhook. By the way, the deepest armbar you're gonna get is from an overhook. But the same scenario applies. You can still throw him towards his head. And you can still finish it. You can see how tight this is. Look at his hand over there like this. It's already tight. All I gotta do is look a little bit and that's gonna get me that submission in there. So this is the better armor. This is the one that I would prefer to do if I can get the arm in there. Of course, things don't always work like you want them. But <clears throat> it's a good option. But let's look at that arm drag that I was talking about. You can trap the arm in here like this, like a sling, and throw it over in here. And come up in here. The reason why I come up and hug his waist and keep my chest tied to his uh, body is so that he cannot take this arm back out. Take it out. See, I'm in there. But if you notice, my pose is also here, which allows me to move my hips. You see this? This is gonna be important for you to finish that armbar. Now that I'm here and his arm can't come out, I'm gonna go up, 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 trap, and put my shin on the back of his neck, here. I get my sweep, and now look, you can do it two different ways. You see how my left foot is behind his neck? I can be nice to my training partner and just go like this, over, and finish it. Or I could do it like Professor Nanku at Troop MMA in Sudbury does it. Or oh, yeah, actually, this is the way he showed me. He shoves his shin into the face and <laughs> put it on top, uh, which is going to limit the amount of partners that you're going to get <laughs> to practice this. So if I'm doing it with Jay, he's my boy, I'm going to take it a little bit easy and we're going to go back and forth because I don't want him to put his shin on my face. So let's do that again. <clears throat> So trap the arm here, one, two. If you notice, I'm cupping right here at the tricep and I'm moving my body out of the way. Here, and I'm trapping here. You see, I'm nice and tight. And now I need my pose. I need my pose so I can go up. And I'm gonna go up, shin goes here, get my sweep, and on top, and I'll finish. Oh look, I have spider control. Why do I need this hand here? Because if I don't, okay, look, he can run away. Oh, but he jumped from the frying pan into the fire. That's my triangle. Sorry, we're talking about arm bars. So let me switch to arm bar right here, okay? So it's a nice little transition that you can have, um, especially from inside the guard. You know, often enough, you think of positions and you think, oh no, I'm on my back. He's inside my guard. I need to sweep. That's a very valid point. Don't forget though, if you and I are playing soccer, and all I'm doing is defense, 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 I'm never gonna be able to score a goal. So I need to attack. My defense and my offense have to go hand in hand. I can't just be like defense, 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 right? So from inside the guard, often, more often than not, I'm always throwing attacks. And from my attacks, I create a response, also known as the read. The read is I do this, you do that. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna catch you with this, right? So it's sort of like, you, you look at techniques, right? There's arm bar, triangle, omoplata, sweep, whatever it may be. In between all these different techniques, there's a conversation happening. There's a movement of the body. Is that I am doing this while you're doing that. And I'm eliciting these responses. That's the read. That's one of the most important things that you should be paying attention. While I do this, what is he doing, okay? And if my attack is so linear that I don't have options, then if it doesn't work the first time, it's just not gonna work, right? So let's show um, <clears throat> another, uh, another attack then from a different position. 100%, so let's look at this other position. So now we looked at inside the guard, let's look at it from passing the guard. Now he's on the bottom, right? Now often enough, look, I'm gonna do an X pass, let's see. Look, I get control of his lapel, I get control of his knee, and I go up to knee on belly. So now I'm here on knee on belly, right? Obviously, his defense is gonna to be to like, you know, block my pass, hip out, <clears throat> get his guard back somehow, right? 
like in, an, in a broad sense of the idea, that's what's happening. I'm passing the guard, he doesn't want that, he wants to get his guard back. So now let's talk about his two arms, his frame. As I pass the guard in here, boom, you're gonna see two hands, okay? So we're gonna divide them just so that we can uh, explain it a little bit better. So let's look. The first arm is the one that is closest to me. He's pushing at my hip, no problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the arm in here like this, I'm gonna post and I'm gonna shove my shin right into his armpit in here. And now I'm gonna stay on top and I'm gonna finish that arm bar right there. Let's look at that again. So now the conversation was, I just passed his guard. So watch, any guard pass will work of course. But for ease of explanation, I'm here. Here's the arm, I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna shove my shin in there and now I'm gonna be on top. Oh look, it's an overhooked arm bar. And as you know, that's one of the tighter ones that you're gonna get. Boom. So that was one. Let's talk about the other arm now. Though. I just passed his guard, <clears throat> and now he knows better. He keeps his arm nice and tight in here. But he makes a horrible mistake that a lot of white belts make, and they start to push on my knee. Because guess what? Knee on belly hurts. Okay, if you become really good at knee on belly, you're gonna drain the energy of your opponent. So look at this arm. I'm gonna grab underneath here, I'm gonna grab his tricep. And my, my elbow is gonna go right into his chest, sort of like in his rib cage. And that's more pressure. Not only is my knee giving him pressure, but my elbow is also going downwards on him. You can be nice and just step over, or you can shove his head here. Step over, and now look, you sit down. There's that armbar. But like anything, this is a scramble. Look, he can run away. Oh, that's right. I got triangle and I got armbar again. I like how you're, um, you're talking about possibilities and eventualities and you're not talking about certainty. Like, for sure this is going to work. So I, I really appreciate that. I'm sure the guys do as well. Well, you know, and, and thank you for pointing that out because you know what? If one technique works all the time, then that's the technique that I have to learn and that's it. But the point is, it, it doesn't. You know, when something's gonna go wrong, it's bound to go wrong, and you need to be prepared. You need to give yourself options. If this doesn't work, then I got this. Sort of like boxing, think. Jab didn't work, no problem. Cross, cross didn't work, hook. Hook didn't work, here comes the roundhouse. It's, uh, it's a conversation, <coughs> not a script. 100%. All right, let's what's look next, at, sir? Let's look at the, another one from Neon Belly. I really like this one. Now look, now he knows better. He stays tight. So I'm on Neon Belly, and both of his arms stay tight in here like this and I can't get in there. Some people stop attacking this arm because he's already tight. Look, you're gonna do this kind of a, a, a grip with your hand in here like this, and it's actually quite strong, and it fits perfectly right there. You just gotta push a little bit. So you're gonna go boom, look, slides, and now look how much pressure I have with my elbow on his chest. Same thing, step over, and you can finish that arm bar, make sure that the thumb is pointing up in here like this, that way you know that you have good leverage, on the arm, and if you pull this way, you raise your hip, that's gonna give you the arm bar. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you one of the things uh, that is related to the arm bar, but gives you those options that we were talking about, okay? No, just the arm bar, it has all the things too. So this is actually part of my blue belt curriculum, and I'm gonna show you how I set it up. Let's look at the scar fold position. Now we were successful at passing the guard, and we ended up in the scar fold position here like this, Let's talk about this. The reason why I'm here is because I don't want him to be able to turn to his side, take my back, or recover his guard, right? So I have my on the hook and I put my thigh under his shoulder. It's sort of like if your car is parked on a hill, you put a block, well, maybe this is in Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do it in the Philippines you put too. A, in the Philippines, <laughs> yeah. You put a rock on the back of the tire so yeah. that it doesn't roll back. Right. So look, I put a rock on the back <laughs> of this strong tire, right? And now he can turn uh, to me. Oh, but look, I have the arm too, right? Look, I can advance this position from here, here. And now look at this leg. I can shove it through again. Look, I'm in the same position again. I can just step right here and finish this arm bar right here. We're gonna need to see that again, professor. Let's look at this. Scarf fold, nice and tight, okay? And I have this. Very important, I'm trapping not super hard. I'm still allowing for some movement to happen in there, but I'm never allowing the arm to escape. 
So I have it and I have it secure. Now watch this. My knee is ready to rock. I'm gonna switch my legs and I'm gonna advance my knee. And my hips are gonna come so high, closer to his head. Watch this. Here, and now I drive my knee to the ground and watch what happens to my hips. My hips come way over his head, which gives me good control of him. Watch. Here, here, here. Yes. Do you see the back trailing leg? That trailing leg is gonna fit in this little spot right here. Here. If you notice, my knee came past his face and my foot is right by his armpit. And now all I gotta do is go from there to here and I can actually finish that arm bar right there. But there's another arm bar close by. Watch this. I have the hand here like this and I'm gonna push it down, 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 down. What do I want? If his arm bends, I trap it. Look, shoulder lock. I go here and that's gonna give me that. Let's do that again. I go here. Oh, but now this time around when I'm pushing, he strains it out. He knows if it bends, I trap it with his leg. So he strains it out. Thank you very much, sir. I'm gonna go here. That's an armbar right there. Or I go push it. Here, this is part of the curriculum. I put my shin on his bicep. I staple it. And now look at this movement on my legs right now. I'm gonna pivot and windshield wash her like this. Watch. And I step over. Now that I step over, if you look at this hand, my good old underhook that I never forget, I have it here. This is now a lever. I can turn him to his side here. And I don't want him to roll back. So just like that rock that I put on that tire, I put my foot right here, right? And now look, all I gotta do is trap either a Kimura or get up, go for that arm bar that we want. But there's a lot more stuff in there. So I'll show you this stuff. I'm here, I switch my legs, I pin his bicep with my shin, I switch my shin step over. Remember that lever? I turn him to the side, but wait a second. He knows what's coming, doesn't he? He doesn't want me to do, to do that armbar anymore, so he grabs there. If you're doing this in a gi scenario, watch. Here, you're gonna go here. See that pen? See this hand? Normally I'll be here. I'm gonna actually block his forearm with my hand here, and I'm gonna grab his pant and grab it with my hand here. Now I have that arm trap. Watch, I can then step around. See this collar right here? I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna bow and arrow him, okay? Of course, if his hand comes out, there's that arm bar there. So you have really, really good uh, attacks that you can do from there. Let's look at another position. Now that we're making that transition, we're in, we looked at it from the guard. We looked at it from side control. Let's look at it from um, top mount. So I'm in top mount here with Jay. <clears throat> and look, if I do it in an obvious way, it's sort of like if I'm gonna throw a jab, here comes the jab, I'm never gonna find my target. So if I start trapping his arm like this, this tells him, here comes the arm bar, and guess what? He's gonna just pull it back. Or it's gonna make it very difficult for me to trap it. So rather, what I do is I elicit a response. Here's how I do that. I want him to defend this arm. So I focus my attention now with both of my hands by pushing here. Why? Because if he doesn't do anything, look, there's a paintbrush or also known as the Americana. I got the Americana, I bring his elbow to his body and I go up. And that's a submission, right? But he recognizes that. And that's exactly what I want. If he doesn't do anything, I finish the Americana or paintbrush. But if he does respond, watch what happens. I pin his hand down like this. He sees that Americana coming. Oh, there's that other arm to the rescue. That's exactly what I want. I'm gonna now raise my knee all the way up here and I'm gonna go to S mount in here. See how my my thigh came all the way up in here like this. I'm sitting comfortably here. I'm sitting actually on the side of my thigh, on his body. And I'm leaning on him to drain his energy. But now I'm here, right? I'm no longer attacking the bottom arm, I'm attacking this arm. And so now watch. What I do is I always like to finish this arm bar on the top. So I keep the pressure on him. I hook inside here, I pose, and I go here, look. And now I pull. And when I pull, I'm not pulling at the elbow. This is a mistake that I see everybody doing. They keep pulling at the armbar at the elbow. 
You're not gonna straighten out anything in there. See, nothing. You gotta pull out the wrist. And that's what actually extends the arm and allows you to finish that arm bar. Let's look at that again. So I go, I push down, boom, in here. He goes to defend here, right? I put my knee way up there, and look, my foot comes in, 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 and I go into S mount. Now I'm nice, comfortably seated in here. I focus on this arm. I'm gonna hook that arm. I'm gonna pose forward here because that continues my pressure with my body on him. I step over here, and now look, I pull and I extend my hips, and that's gonna give me that arm bar. Okay? So it's a really, really neat one. You know what, Jay does a little, uh, a little uh, uh, adjustment, actually. Uh, Jay's is really, really good at this uh, movement. Let's go back to side control for a second, okay? Because, you know, I forgot to mention this to you, and I think you'll find this little detail very, very useful because it's a very intelligent read, much like this was, where you attack one thing so that they can defend, and then you switch to the next thing. So Jay, show them, show them that little detail that you do um, from side control to trap the arm. So, so pins the arm, he switches to the other side, boom, and he finishes that arm bar, right? Finish the arm bar, there you go, right? And fall back, there you go, boom. What I'm talking about is him trapping his arm. So now I can't reach my arm. Let's do that again, Jeff. You wanna explain what's happening there, yet, uh, Jeff? So once I set up the Kimura, um, I set up the Kimura grip. He's defending the Kimura, I see that. So I'm switching so he can't roll back. Have the back. What I'm doing is baiting the leg around and trapping under the armpit so now he can't move. So I still have the Kimura grip for the arm bar. Fall back, switch, finish. So, baiting his leg on the front, forcing me to go up there to try to grab, actually works against me because he steps over and now he tries my arm, separating my arm from a potential defense. And we'll talk about defense after. Right now, we're just getting different arm bars from different positions, going from guard, side control, from mount. Now, we've shown you a couple of them from the different positions in there, but we haven't gotten to the back control yet. Now, I really like, obviously, back. If you get somebody's back, well, you should be able to finish them. Whether it's a triangle, whether it's a, a, a rear naked choke, a bow and arrow, a traditional choke, all of those different things, especially with the gi. Now, we're in April, of course. Uh, in April, I make a transition between gi and no gi. So as soon as April hits, weather begins to get nice. Maybe I'm too optimistic because I look at outside and there's snow everywhere. If you guys are watching from the States, apparently we're having some crazy storm coming our way. So yay, more snow. But yay, I'm taking off to Guatemala to promote Lucha Rolls. Uh, our first EBI Rules uh, international tournament called Lucha Rolls will take place in Guatemala um, this April 14th. I'm gonna be hosting a seminar at Ludus, T, um, uh, at Ludus Academy and on the 13th, April 13th. On the 14th, we're going to be having uh, some super fights and uh, the Lucha Rolls tournament. We'll put the link up there for you so people can, can track. Beautiful. Let me show you some stuff from the back. So, <clears throat> this is a very, very intelligent read. Because obviously I have his back, I have my hooks, I have my seat belt, you know. I can have my, uh, my uh, motorcycle grip or whatever it is. You can already see this. Different attacks I can do. I can go bow and arrow in here. Boom. Right? I can go traditional choke here, look. I can go pull down and choke. I can go up and choke. Many different things. That's right, we're talking about arm bars. So let me show you what I do, okay? So from here, normally I'll be here. Watch what I do from here. I'm gonna be trapping the one arm here and here. So sort of like here, okay? And now I wanna create that sense of security for him. I wanna make him feel like he's able to escape. So watch what I do, I go here, boom, okay? Right around there, I'm not attacking anything. He doesn't feel threatened at all, right? In fact, I play this loose. Oh look, he's already escaping, or is he? I put my arm right here, I throw him to the side, and there's my arm. Woo! It's a nice little read. <laughs> that's a good one, man. It just creeps up on you, it right? It creeps up, that's why I love it. One more time, one so more time. I go here, seat belt in here, now watch. 
My arm that goes on top goes over, and now this arm goes over here. He doesn't feel threatened at all. I can still have very good control from him in here. I can still switch to my other attacks that I already explained. But you see, this arm that I have trapped, I'm gonna put it on the ground here. Boom, in here. He still doesn't feel threatened. And now look, I go here, boom. Oh no, he's escaping. Now look, I can let go of the other hand, trap here, and push him to the side here. And I go here. Of course, if the transition happens that he rolls away, oh look, we're here again. One, two, or three. Okay. So there's a risk to, uh, to baiting that technique, right? I mean, every technique has a risk, my friend. You know, if, <laughs> if, like I said, if, if, if it always works, that's the only one that you need to know. Right. Man. But here's the thing, creating scrambles when you're going from one position to the next, that's opportunity. Scrambles are opportunities. Opportunities for me to attack, but also opportunities for them to defend. So I need to be ready. I need to understand the mechanical movement of what it is that I'm trying to do and what it is that he's trying to accomplish to sort of mitigate that risk factor. If I may ask a question, can we put ourselves back into that position Absolutely. one more time? I need to know when it's too late, when to abandon. So I've, I've set up the read, or I've, I've set up this moment, so you got that, you fall down, he starts feeling like he's about to escape. When is it too late, brother? So now, now I have to be proactive. If I stay here for too long, he's gonna to continue to turn and he's gonna probably turn towards me and I've lost my position. So I can't linger. I have to identify the read and attack right away. So I have to set it up here and I'm here, boom. As soon as I get here, as soon as his head pops up, boom, there goes my leg. If I take too long, you, can, you saw what happened. So I'm here, boom, 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 and now I'm lingering, oh, there it goes, my position. And now I'm in a bottom position and I have to get it all the way back. If you can be demonstratively safe about it, how fast does, can this happen? Oh, this is uh, actually, <laughs> this is awesome. Please be. <laughs> you know, actually, um, you know, in, in, um, in Jiu Jitsu, things happen very, very fast, of course. If I'm gonna go for that technique, I'm going here, look, right away I'm going here. If you notice, I let go of his head right away and right away I'm going here. So it actually happens at this speed. I go one, two, hit, hit boom. In there. Wow. So it's like, bam! You gotta really trap it like that. You know, the way that I learned this um, was, was a little bit uh, more, it, there was less explanation, so I, I knew what the move looked like, but I didn't understand the read. This is a nice read for you guys to consider and to go try. This is how I originally learned uh, that read. I learned about, okay, well, I have my seatbelt, which you should always have if you're controlling back. Oh, look, I have this arm. So all I learned was push his head to the other side. That's how I learned it. Right. But, and that's a valid move. But the problem is, I'm not fully understanding the read. I'm not fully understanding how can I get him to do what I want him to do, like without him even realizing what's happening, you know what I mean? And I think that that is the transition between basic jujitsu, I'm a white belt, this is my first day, what the scenario about looks like? Oh, make the arm go the wrong way, right? But as you progress in jiu-jitsu, you start saying, okay, well, I understand all that. How can I get him to just give me his arm and put it there for me so I can right. leverage and do that? So this is sort of like that transition that you're making now where you're connecting the dots and you're actually um, executing your attacks in a premeditative way. Yeah. Cool. So that was stuff from inside the guard. Stuff from side control, stuff from knee and belly, stuff from mount, stuff from back control. This is arm bars galore. This is my boy Jay. Thank you, Aperture. I look forward to seeing you guys in Guatemala. I can't wait for the tournament. It's gonna be great. Shout out to the guys in Costa Rica at Hero Academy. My boy Romsa is doing great work down there. I will see you guys in the next segment which we still have to talk about what segment that's going to be, but I'm sure you're going <laughs> to we'll, like it. We'll work it out, homie. Thank you Oss. so much. Oss. Oss. Thank you, brother.